Haven of Horror. I'm Subject. We've got The Day Ghost back with us. Uh, everybody's favorite Christmas horror film, Overlord. Uh, the most okay movie ever made. Uh, I will say this, though. I have a newfound appreciation for Wyatt Russell. Uh, but we'll get into that, because he's my favorite part of the movie. He's awesome, yeah. <laughs> so this was the second pick of Austin's, uh, directed by Julius Avery. Um, I'm going to let you take the lead on this one again, just because you have probably much more to say than I do. Uh, so Clover Lord, as I call it, because this was almost a Cloverfield movie, but then was not. And it honestly probably should be, because this movie kind of bombed. Um, unfortunately, um, that may, like, if you were to have just slapped that name on it, don't change anything else. Um, it maybe could have done a bit better, but, uh, anyways, at least it exists. Um, Cloverlord is a movie about some soldiers who have to take out a tower because the next day is D-Day and they need their planes to fly in and provide um, cover, and they can't do that with the tower in, so these American soldiers got to go in, and they got to destroy this tower. And it's ultimately kind of a horror Wolfenstein film in the, you know, that's kind of the Castle Wolfenstein type thing, and there's some Nazi scientist stuff kind of going on. And, yeah. This movie could have benefited from some aliens. I think. Because if you make it a Cloverfield movie... Oh, with my aliens movie, being in it? <laughs> yeah, because if you make it a Cloverfield movie, you gotta shove aliens in there. I don't know where you would have fit them. <laughs> well, they would be the ones... Maybe the aliens Nazis. shot them down at the beginning. <laughs> They'd be the ones in charge of the Nazis. Hitler oh, would be an okay. alien all along. Oh, I see, I see. When when the one Nazi is, like face gets shot open, uh, it reveals he's an alien. Yeah. It'd be like Cloverfield's take on uh, Invasion of the Body Snatchers. <laughs> and then the Cloverfield monster shows up <laughs> on the beach of, like, D-Day. <laughs> I want this so bad. What a shit show. <laughs> <laughs> That sounds hilarious. That'd be the sequel, yeah. <laughs> uh, is that not what the Clo Cloverfield Paradox is? I mean, basically. <laughs> <laughs> so, we ta we've talked about this movie off-camera quite a few times. Um, and one thing that you, you and I had talked about was you wondered if I would have a different experience of this, uh, with this after watching John Carpenter. And I did, and it made me appreciate certain things more. But I still wish it was a little... Maybe not schlocky to the point of, like, those direct-to-DVD World War II zombie movies. But maybe just a little more heightened in places. Because a lot of the movie is just drama between soldiers. And I think Which if you is funny, because I'm going to have the opposite from my rewatch, in that... <laughs> It's schlockier than I remember. <laughs> <laughs> um, because my... So my attention with this movie was instantly on screen whenever something schlocky was happening. You know, that one guy that first gets injected and, like, his neck starts, like, turning and twisting and shit. Uh, the stuff at the base at the end with Wyatt Russell. But when it's just the guys, like, trying to survive in World War II, I'm like, okay. Sure. Which is fair, but what I like about that is I like how they approach that from a horror perspective. Like, the, I think that plane opening is really great, and it's very, like, horrific, and, like, like I'm, I, like, in the theater, I was like, oh, like, this, this is scary, but not in, like, a more traditional, I guess, way you would think mm -hmm. of horror. Like, it's just, we're applying that lens onto war, and I think that's very interesting. Okay. And that carries through a lot of it. And then there's kind of a twist where it becomes like you get some of like the more genre aspects. And it becomes not schlocky, but like schlocky in the way that something like the thing is, right? Um, specifically, and it's something I've always had since I've seen it, and I, la I laughed so hard this time. 
which is that so in the thing, uh, Kurt Russell has like one of the worst one-liners ever, but it's delivered so perfectly that it flips around and becomes awesome. Which is when uh, you know, the thing roars at him and he goes, "Yeah, well, fuck you too." <laughs> then it's the Maltov. Like that's not a clever one-liner, but it's delivered so perfectly. Uh, this movie, like Wyatt Russell, gets to have his version of like a line, a one-liner like that, where he gets so okay. In this movie, the scientists they're working on the serum. It is basically like a super soldier kind of serum, right? And it will oh, bring dear. people back to the back to the life and kind of make them uh, immortal and whatnot. And Wyatt Russell injects himself with it, and the big Nazi uh, leader in it goes like uh, how does it feel to have like the power of eternity going through your blood and he goes not too fucking good <laughs> and I can confirm that awesome. Austin and I quote that line from the thing at each other all the time yeah and fuck you too it's, uh, it's great <laughs> yeah Wyatt Russell is hands down my favorite part of this movie um he is somewhere he is a blend of Kurt Russell and the Thing and Snake Plissken, and I love that. If 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 we ever have to do another Escape from Blank movie, cast Wyatt Russell. Like I'd watch that. It's the only way I would watch it. Hopefully, if Marvel keeps him around, he gets something better to do than Falcon and the Winter Soldier. Well, that that I was so excited for that show because they cast Wyatt Russell, and he's my favorite part of this movie. He's wonderful. <laughs> he's my favorite part of that show too. For what mm -hmm. little that means. Uh, oh, did you know he had? Speaking of, did you know he had an uncredited cameo in Escape from LA? I did not, but that doesn't. That's not too surprising because, like. You know, a lot of filmmakers and actors and whatnot get cameos for their kids. He is one of the orphan boys. I just oh, okay, that that's was, pretty cool. That was fun. Um, so yeah, I mean, like you said, it's kind of Wolfenstein. But again, the thing I like about Wolfenstein is it's so over the top and insane. And this movie, it's like kind of flatlining in parts. And then something interesting will happen. It'll like spark for a minute. And it's like, oh, this is cool. And then it just... <laughs> Well, it's the difference of uh, Wolfenstein is, you know, just like a balls-to-the-walls shooter, while this is like a horror -y kind of take on... It's not exactly Wolfenstein, obviously, right. but there there are parallels to that. Uh, they were definitely looking at Wolfenstein. Balls to the walls, and it would be amazing. See, I don't think I would like it as much, because I like the serious aspects of this movie. Like, for me, it goes schlocky enough, where it's that Carpenter thing, where... It's like a really good movie, and there's some schlocky things in it. Um, I think like a Carpenter film, you can like pick holes and do it. I just kind of don't really care. Like it, the movie pulls me along through it well enough that I'm like, yeah, that's fine. Like you know, and the thing, they'll like walk outside in the middle of like the snowy like Arctic with a sweater on. It doesn't bother me in the moment because I don't I'm just know if you remember but we talked movie. about that with the thing. As I had a lot of questions about how the thing worked and this and that. I was like, you know what? At the end of the day, it doesn't matter because I'm having fun with this movie. Mm -hmm. And I, I think I don't know. I think there's an energy that the thing has that this movie lacks in certain parts. Well, yeah, I I'd say this is more that like Prince of Darknessy Carpenter, and I don't even know if the director, because I've never heard him talk about this, but if he was going for Carpenter. But since I've seen it, I've always kind of seen that influence on this movie, and I don't know if that's just me being a John Carpenter fan coming into this movie, being like, well, this is something that I love. And I can maybe see, if I squint right, I can see elements of that here. But, uh, yeah, uh, I'd say it's more like that, Carpenter. Not so much the thing, but there are aspects of the thing here, in terms of at least Wyatt Russell's performance. Can I just say I hate the title of that movie, because it's so, like, gen in vague and nondescript. Like, you just talk about the thing. What thing? The thing! 
Would you prefer it to be the title of the short story, Who Goes There? Sure, why not? Uh, so sounds this like is a Dr. Seuss book. <laughs> See, it's perfect. You sell it to kids with that title, and then they watch it, and it's just John Carpenter's the thing. I mean, I, I would love that. <laughs> Uh, so this director is currently slated to direct a remake of Van Helsing. Yeah, so I saw that, but just off of Wikipedia, I don't know exactly what that means. Like, if that's the universal Van Helsing, if it's something else, if it's maybe tied to that anime, because his movie, another movie he's working on, is an anime adaptation. So I don't really know. But he is working on a Van Helsing movie. We should we should do that original that two thousand four one at some point. I'm kind of scared to go back to it because I loved it as a kid. I'm and definitely I'm... scared to watch that movie, but we'll have to do it at some point. Because I'm sure it doesn't hold up. I even had the video game. Um, that, there's no way that was good. <laughs> it's alright. It's kind of your standard like hack and slash. Mm-hmm. Me. Movie but anyway, tie-in, yeah. Uh, so yeah, I mean, it's. I will say, I what I did like about this movie, other than Wyatt Russell, is it does have that old school '80s uh, feel to it. And you know, I think what might have helped is a better score because I didn't notice a lot of the score in this movie. So they're just got a this. very just modern score. I think if yeah. you had done something more, either one of two things, right? You either go full Carpenter and get that synth electronic score, or, and this is just a personal preference, just go all out heavy metal score uh, during maybe the action scenes. I think that movie would have, that would have given this movie a little more energy because you compared it to Prince of Darkness, which isn't totally an invalid comparison, but what Prince of Darkness has going for it, even though it's a slow, methodical, you know, talky movie. Is that score that helps keep it keep it going? I mean, you can't be at a Carpenter score. Yeah, he's great. Right. But I'm just saying. Uh, I think I, that's I agree. One of the I think issues. a better. I could have had a better score. Absolutely. It's just when I was watching, I was because score isn't something that usually sticks out to me unless it's like really good. And even then, sometimes good scores don't stick out to me. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm just not that kind of person. But while watching it again. I was kind of thinking about it in places where I was like, this is just kind of modern score. Like, <laughs> there's a million movies that have scores that sound like this. Yeah. So, and... I think specifically there was a part where the main character, uh, Boyce, he goes, he kind of stumbles into uh, the church and he finds his one friend uh, from the plane there and he let they, they get out and there's a part where it cuts to them running through a tunnel and it's just like your basic kind of like bam, 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 bam. <laughs> like just whatever like Hans Zimmer yeah like what uh, I had to I'm... stop because I realized my go to thing was just kind of a trumpet version of the Halloween theme <laughs> it was like bam, 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 bam. <laughs> And, I, and I, I'm with you. I'm not, not a big my, not getting my guy. point across, but like I don't, I don't seek out scores. But I have lately, especially watching Carpenter films, notice how they affect a movie. Because uh, we've talked about this off camera too. One of my biggest issues, I think, with Assault on New or er, no, Escape from New York. I almost called it Assault on New York. <laughs> like combined two of his movies, was that the score is completely wrong for that movie. Um, By the way, fuck you. Okay, so <laughs> for the longest time, you kept complaining to me about how much you don't like that movie, and I was like ranking all my Carpenter stuff, and I had it lower because I was like, ah, it's been so long. Like maybe it's not that great. And I don't know. I rewatched it. It's like a top four Carpenter. Movie. <laughs> it is absolutely not a top four Carpenter movie. No, Escape from New York is wonderful. Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> but anyways, but anyway. on to this movie that also kind of has Snake Plissken. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, I liked Boyce quite a bit. I think it was smart to make him the main character. Wyatt Russell's character, I think, is a little too unlikable to be the protagonist. But as No, a he's side got that kind of perfect... Um, it's almost like the Jack Sparrow thing, right? Where this is a perfect side character. 
but if you were to make this the main character, it maybe wouldn't work as well. Um, I also adore the the fact that this movie does not make him the like rock in the old Doom movie, where he is just the bad guy at the end. Because the so, first time I watched it going in blind, I was like, that's where this is going, clearly. You know, it's funny and you mention that, because... Um, I love that you're going to say, you're going to complain that it doesn't, right? No, no, I'm fine with the... Oh. <laughs> but I was thinking about I this, I, I forgot about this till you said something. But that whole fight with him and the Nazi scientist, it's just the ending of Doom. They both inject themselves with a formula that makes them super strong, and then they fight. Well, I guess this looked at that and said, how do we make that good? <laughs> okay, this is where you're going to crucify me. It is don't, good. I, I don't, even, don't even say it. <laughs> no, no, no. This is really well done. However, Carl Urban and The Rock will always be, to me, more enjoyable to watch than either, whoever Nazi guy is and Wyatt Russell. As much as I love Wyatt Russell in this movie. Are you gonna really sit there and tell me you don't like Carl Urban more? Not in that movie. <laughs> oh, I think he's fine in that movie. It's Carl Urban. Exactly, he's fine. <laughs> Look, I unironically love that 2005 Doom movie, and I will not apologize for it. <laughs> you, you were, you will for that insult. <laughs> so, Austin. I, I I know I came off a little down on this movie, but I am still going to give it a 3.5. Uh, I think this is going to be a Halloween situation where I respect the movie more than I actually enjoy watching it. But I would highly recommend this if any of the things we've descri described sounds interesting. Um, and go watch this movie. <laughs> if, you, if you like that kind of stuff, go watch it. Bombed, go watch it because it's really good. And it didn't, it should have made more than what it did. I think even, I mean, you gave it 3.5, but I think you can even agree with me that it deserved better than what it got. So, do you think that's part of the, because of the marketing? Because I remember seeing trailers for this movie, and they sold a completely different movie. Maybe, because you also gotta remember, I didn't see any of that. I went into this movie blind, just on oh, the yeah, yeah. word that I heard this was really good. And... So I missed out on that entirely. I've heard that the marketing was very misleading. I got the, I was trying to think about it this time, and I was like, you know, just coming at it from a studio perspective, and I, I guess I can kind of understand maybe why a studio wouldn't be sure to sell this. Because there's kind of two movies, right? You get, like, the darker, more, like, gritty war movie, and the more kind of genre-y science stuff. So you're going after two different audiences. Well, mm -hmm. and, yeah, and, like, I remember the, the... And zombies are popular, so I guess just kind of take that maybe <laughs> trying to look, make it look like that, even though that's really not... the marketing made it look exactly gone. like what I wanted. <laughs> mm -hmm. But, uh, yeah, I, I... Final thoughts, score, all that good stuff. Uh yeah, so I think the cast overall in this movie is really good. I don't really think there's a weak member of the cast. I think they're all really good. Um and yeah, no, I I really like this movie quite a lot. Uh and I will give it a four. Oh, we have to give a special shout out as well to the main woman in this movie, who like is takes in the soldiers and helps them because she's great. Mm -hmm. uh, and I felt bad for the kid that just wanted to play baseball, and that one soldier guy was a dick. <laughs> <laughs> but they learned to be friends. <laughs> That's the character act. The one of the, the few that survived. Oh <laughs> uh, well, Austin, thanks for recording these with me. It's always a good time to have you on the show, and uh, we're gonna start our Christmas horror videos soon. We gotta figure out. What was that? Christmas. <laughs> I guess you don't right. want to do Gremlins. <laughs> well, yeah, towards Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> but we'll build up to we'll build up to Gremlins because uh, well, we'll talk about it here in a minute. 
But anyway, thank you guys for watching. If you liked this video, let us know in the comments below or hit the thumbs up. As of, as always, of course, also hit the subscribe button. We'll be back soon with more Christmassy. Smash horror. that like button. Smash that subscribe button. Hit the little bell notification sign. What he hit said. all. <laughs> See you guys later. See ya.